unpleasant dreams, everyone. That's not right. Whatever. Anyway, great! Another Italian game from 2016! Third time in a row! Self-harm isn't good for your health, you know. Shut up! <laughs> Sebastien Loeb is a French 9-time consecutive World Rally Champion, having the longest streak from 2004 to 2012. I wish the world ended there. Born in the town of Hajno in 1974, he used to be a gymnast. But after some odd jobs, he went to the world of rally racing in 1998, starting his career proper in a Citroen Saxo Trophy. He went to the JWRC in 2001 with the Saxo and won five of the six events, becoming champion already. But he also had a Cinti WRC the same year with the Zara at the Rally San Remo. The kid had potential, so it was time for Citroen's WRC team in 2002. He won Monte Carlo, but due to an illegal tire change, he got penalized and went second. But he won Germany, so that's okay. And the wins kept on coming, finishing second overall next year, only losing by one point out of Petter Solberg. And he eventually won the WRC in 2004, and 2005, and 2006 despite a banking accident, and 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, you get my point. What I'm saying is that he ruined WRC for a while, and I hate him so much! And of course, if you're a highly successful rally driver, this bound to have a rally game with your name on it. And Sebastian Loeb is one of them. I hope he doesn't fucking die! Joke about it being dirt rally at home goes here. Milestone was founded in Milan, Italy as Graffiti in 1994, until the name changed in 96. Other than a few licensed games based on the X Factor, an Italian game show, and Australian Idol, oddly enough, they mainly developed racing games since 1995 Screamer. Ah! When you hear Milestone as a game company, you'd hear licensed races based on championships. Either that or the guys who did Hot Wheels Unleashed. Yeah, they usually do games based on MotoGP, SBK, MXGP, Supercross. Damn, they're all motorcycle games. They even tried their stint at a Gran Turismo S game called Ride. If Polyphony can make a fall of the Tourist Trophy, someone else might. And Milestone did it and spawned sequels to it. But I'm not talking about bikes, I'm talking about cars. And car games, they did. They used to make WRC games until dudes were given the Killington, the guys who did that alternate World War 1 game. But they can't just give up yet! Here's the best deal of Rally Evil, still published by Milestone, and sponsored by someone who occasionally races these days. It was released just a month after their rally, available for the PC, Xbox One, PS4, and something called the Black Dot, which is a cloud gaming thing. It's never gonna catch up. Remember Stadia? I even forgot what it was called when I was writing the script. Finally, a game with a higher comps than the lobotomy and second wave feminism! You start off fresh, and you get a patronizing voice telling you what do the features do, what do you do in these special game modes, or some shit. You can skip them at least, so not very irritating. Hi, would you like to play the driving tutorial? Nah, I'm good. Well, let's make my own team, considering of me and my not-so-real boyfriend, Gordon. I'm calling it Fane for a racing team. Because Palma Motorsport was taken. Damn, not much option for local colors. That won't bite in the ass later. Anyways, you start with the Pooch on 106 Rally. Funny little thing, but I prefer the facelift. And the choice is yours for now. You have Trick Race, where you just pick a car you want or rent, and track you like to race. Career, where you must earn medals and move up the rankings to get into Pooja's racing team to race at Pikes Peak alongside Loeb. And then you have the Loeb Experience, where you get to do challenges based on a driver's career, with interview videos with him talking about it. At least it doesn't look at you straight ahead while talking about his life, unlike Ron McCall wearing that golf game. Is the Irishman gone, mommy? You can also drive around this old quarry. Cool, you can even do time trials in certain parts of the map. Let's start off easy and see how it looks proper. The presentation is alright for a mid-generation game. It looks sufficiently real in some places, but despite that, it's easy on the eyes. What's well, not this night stages? I can't see much at times, meaning that I have to adjust the gamma in game. The cars themselves are great looking as well. They don't fall into the pitfalls that Forza kept falling since the first game. Although this lens looks a bit odd at first glance, but compared to the real thing, it doesn't look terrible. 
Not as terrible as the DLC is good or in the promotional material. What the hell? The screw in the game looks good, though not as accurate. Speaking of accurate, it's hard to see newer badges in older cars, like the 95 Impreza or the Lancia Fulvia. Even though the loading screen with it has the correct badge for the car. And it's hard that cars get their headlights covered in rallycross races, but not in any other rallycross mode. The pop-up is another issue. It's very noticeable with options suddenly appearing even when you're near them. It's so distracting. The menu system is pretty good, easy to navigate, not too cluttered, and aesthetic pleasing. The car selection reminds me of Forza 3 and 4. I miss that shit. I swear, menus get so much worse for me every day. For audio, it's mad. They kind of improved from their first WRC game, but still not much to write home about. Music is also meh, original yet generic sounding. The menu music is dynamic, though it starts to be when you go to the main menu. If you finish the race and get sent back to the career menu, it's stuck in the title screen loop. Despite being the most memorable track in the game, since it always plays in the menu, it's mid mediocre to me. Harmless, but I heard better. No wonder I kept playing songs from other games here. Oh, here's another one. For controls, well, it's no dirt rally, but it's still hard as nails, especially with cars like the Stratos and the Quattro Pike Speed car. It's very familiar, triggers for gas and brake, and the left stick to steer. However, while that's very much standardized, the face buttons aren't. I'm still so used to force the skin that I remap the gear changes to X and B in some PC games. But here, by default, use A to upshift and X to downshift, while the B button is for your handbrake. Now, if I were a PS2 game, I would be fine when I change keys with L2 and R2, or L1 and R1. But somehow, not the face buttons in modern games, because I have to relearn everything when I go to a different game. SHIT! So I guess this is standard, and both Forza and Need for Speed didn't get the memo! Word of caution if you want to drive manual, at the start of the race, you must upshift to go. But that's not really the important part, crazy, I know. The main deal is the handling, and oh god. I can't really say that it's realistic, since I've never driven a car proper before. I'm not a car wizard. What is synchromesh? Go cars don't count. Much like any other rally game, it can be difficult to traverse a dirt path due to how slippery it can be. Meaning that you oversteer if you don't put your foot down, especially more powerful cars. Snow and ice stages are a different story no matter the car. You fish tail very easily and very often. Small Tamra gives you more grip, you're more prone to understeering. So when that happens, you have to try to put some gas in the exit corner early. Not gonna lie, I quite like the driving in this game. However, while it is challenging, it isn't anything special. I've played many rally games before, after all. But it's still easier to play than Dirt Rally, or Richard Burns Rally, or WRC Rally Involved. And that's because of a few things. Like old Grid, it has a rewind feature where, if you make a mistake, you can press the left shoulder button to rectify it. You can only go up to the last 10 seconds, and they are limited, thankfully. You can only have up to 9, you only use it again after a few seconds, and you get a bonus depending on how little you use it in a race. Beat that, Forza! If you're repulsed by it, then you can also restart the stage, even in the middle of a rally event, in the middle of a championship. I feel the Italians made it easy since their first WRC game. As this is a rally game, your objective is simple. Drive on a set path while your coach driver gives you the pace notes. How sharp is the corner, how long till the next bit, which side of the road to stay for a difficult turn, all that. Here, your coach driver determines the sharpness of the corner by the decreasing number, 6 for the least, 1 for the most. Though that's rare and almost replaced by the hairpin corners. They can be described as a suggested gear you should downshift. He isn't annoying and doesn't berate you for crashing or being shared the stage. I'm all for personality, but if I want to be yelled at, I'd hire an actual co-driver. The damage monitor is alright, there's detachable body panels, as well as tires missing. Not much to write home about, I've already witnessed these in all the rally games, but still great to see at least. When it's a rally event with more than a day, you get to fix it at the start of the day. Of course, you're limited by time, but thankfully, it isn't like in WRC 2 Extreme, where the time it counts down while perusing the menu. Basically, box standard stuff. I gotta say, the opponents in the medium difficulty can either be a joke most of the time, or hard as nails other times. Most of the time, just might be doing mistakes, I still get the win. But in other times, even if I do it decently, I somehow still finish up behind the pack, and that concerns me. Sure, you can change the difficulty, but that's not the point. It just gives out this sort of whiplash if you're still used to how much of a joke medium difficulty is, that it isn't even funny. And this also isn't funny, what gives? Was that like a taste of how hard difficulty would be like? Thank god I'm stuck with medium, but still. 
It isn't just the only challenge, the other one is trying to reverse the stage. They can be grueling of course, especially Monaco due to the many times you understeer, Sweden due to how slippery the paths are, Finland due to how fast you get, and Wales. Fuck this place. In Rallycross, however, the opponents are a pushover. Sometimes, literally, you can flip them upside down by bumping into them. Like, I know rally cars are lightweight, but I didn't know they were that light. Why, yes, this game has more than rally driving, but I'll get to that later. If you get a podium finish, you get a medal, the cash reward, and red points. Simple enough, really. However, there's a catch. If you get bronze or silver and want to get gold, be warned as you don't get as much money as winning on your first go. Now sure, it isn't a complete grind fest so no biggie, but I still find it bullshit. When you reach third positions in the leaderboards, you get to race in the lobe events, which are just the same events, except you're dropping cars with terrible orange libraries. I'm sorry, but I just don't like the looks of them. Speaking of which, the organizers have sent you a message. Hi there, rookie. This is Sebastian Loeb. Or at least his dub voice. Unfortunately, Loeb is not in the mood to record the lines in English, so bear with me as I explain these events. Yes, Loeb plays himself if you set the game to French, in case you're wondering. I'm nitpicking, of course. Loeb's French accent is really thick when speaking English, so I don't blame him. In the start of the first stage, it was very, very difficult. Uh, you couldn't attack, you. it was more to, to survive. <laughs> but uh, no, in the other stages, it's, it's okay. Uh, we were pushing very hard. I can understand his speech better than yours, ha ha ha. Completing all the love events in first place as you progress to the top, you get to race in a 208 hill climber at Pikes Peak, and that's it! At least it's an easy million bucks. Like I said, there's Bradley Cross, a standard circuit race against 500 people, simple as that. However, as this is based on the actual Rally Cross events, there's a Joker Lap race. It is a requirement to get through the Joker Lap section of the track at least once to finish properly, otherwise you disqualified because of course. I quite like it, it offers an extra challenge, however, even on medium, it's still a joke. Though I can't ask why medium is such a joke these days because I kept getting my ass kicked in Atomic Heart on that difficulty. The best thing about it is that I don't have to waste so much time doing the races, as it's only one race in 3 laps instead of many tournament-esque heats like the actual events. And then there's Hill Climb, which is just rallying without a co-driver. Hmm. Not only you have your standard race modes, but it also has fun ones, like drift challenges for the rally stages, as well as elimination, sector battle, and shit you find in Project Gotham Racing for the rally cross tracks. Elimination is a lot like Burnout Revenges. Every set of seconds, the last place cars eliminated until you're the last driver standing. And like I said in that review, I really love this kind of knockout and wish it was in more games. Sector battle is a bit like in Pro Street, but instead of points, it's about getting as much sectors with your fastest times than your opponents. Plus, it's on a timer that in laps, and it's over by the time you reach the middle of lap 2. Whoa. Gateway is where you must cross the correct cone gates before time runs out, indicated by the green balls. And perfect trajectory is just time attack with cones that are in the way. I'm getting flashbacks of PGR2. I know it's my favorite, but I also hate them with a passion. Why is my life a trash conundrum? Rally Drift! <laughs> Moving on. There are head to head races to make up for it. Actual face offs for once. Your rivals get a head start, and you must catch up to and pass them. Really great! It's like every race there is the Lakeside bonus race in Sega Rally. Downsides, if you can even call them that, are that they're relegated to one category and there are duels between specific cars, but they're no big deal. To expand the topic on the tracks more, there's 8 rally locations with 8 stages each, 4 unique ones and 4 reverse variants. I kind of expected the stages to actually be free paths connected to one junction like Milestone's first WRC game, but no, they're separate and some are long. So what places do you drive on? Well, nothing fancy, just places the WRC went like San Remo Italy, which has a beautiful portrayal compared to it in your evolution of WRC 3 from 2003. Plus Monte Carlo, Alsace, France, somewhere in Mexico, Wales, Australia, Finland, and Sweden. It is quite healthy, I should say. They offer their own unique challenges, and they are places to look at, even if the pop-up is a nuisance. I really wish Kenny was there though. You then have the rally cross tracks, all but one be real tracks, with a mandatory joker lap section for the normal races. Short and sweet, all I have to say, though the LA truck is really crammed thanks to the walls, thank god it isn't real, and you finally have Pikes Peak with shorter variants as well as the full course, before Polyphony got exclusive rights to the track and never actually used it since. If that's not the definition of evil, then I don't know what is. Don't you think the word evil is a little childish? You're such an ingrate cunt, Sophie. 
really wish there was more hill climb tracks to one out Dirt Rally, but there can all be winners. For cars, not Gran Turismo a lot, but there's still a lot of them. From the old ones like the Mini, the Fulvia Coupe, and this thing, to the usual Group P cars, to the Citroën Supremacy and others, to the current cars we have in early 2016 maximum. It's pretty varied, especially with the additions of the Proton and the early Group A Delta, pretty surprised to see. Of course, they divide into categories, though seeing the C4 next to the coin at the time rally cars is odd to see, and because of that, you can't upgrade them, which is good, because they wouldn't make the game even easier. However, there is an option to have custom libraries on your cars, and it's a disappointment. It isn't really deep, it's kinda like the one in the grid games, pick a body vinyl, the colors of your car and wheels, and that's it. While you have a nice number of vinyls to choose from, as well as different kinds of paint for each color, it's still a letdown when there's only a selection of colors to choose from. Unlike red, you can't make your own colors, and you can't even put sparse decals. At all! So you and your opponents will end up in these amateur hour race libraries that won't even make me blush. You know it's bad when Need for Speed most won unless you add aftermarket decals on the sides and on the windows. Might as well just use the default library instead. At least you can have two custom libraries per car, and one that's universal for every car. Except for most of Lopes cars, and for some reason the Sports Quattro Pike Speed car. Huh. And that's it for a single player portion, as for online play... Well, no one gives a shit anymore. So that was 3. It's not terrible, it has an healthy list of cars, challenging gameplay, and an alright career mode, but even then, it could have been better. The difficulty against other opponents is laughable at medium, and even the extra game modes don't do it for me, except for elimination. The constant of light cross events don't even look consistent. Despite its shortcomings though, it's still a decent game overall. Get it when it's really cheap. Next time... It's not even about Battlefield.